You know, it's funny, we talk about these massive feats of engineering and technology, but sometimes a plane, it's not just a plane, you know? Like this whole A380 thing, it's been in the news, it's retiring, and it really feels like we're saying goodbye to a celebrity, not just some big hunk of metal. It's interesting, isn't it, that emotional connection people have. And it's more than just its size, although that's obviously a huge part of it. The A380 story, it's really a fascinating look at ambition at how the aviation industry, how it reacts to change, how it evolves. Right. And that's what we're going to unpack today, right? We've got a ton of material here about the A380. So let's let's dive into what made this plane so unique, why it was such a big deal, and maybe why, even though it's being retired, it still matters in the grand scheme of aviation. Absolutely. I think what's really captivating about the A380 is that it goes beyond just, you know, Airbus building a massive plane. You gotta remember, back in the 90s, Boeing, they were the kings, especially in that long haul market with the 747. You know, that iconic hump, that shape. It was the plane for long distances. And Airbus, they saw an opportunity to challenge. So it was a bit of a David and Goliath kind of situation. Exactly. They wanted to create the world's largest passenger plane, one that could carry more people farther than ever before. And to do that, they had to think big, literally. I was looking at your notes earlier, we're talking about a plane with a wingspan of a football field. Was that all just for show? Or was there a real reason they had to build it that big? Well, there's a reason they say form follows function. The sheer size of the A380, it was essential to what they wanted to achieve. A larger wingspan, it means more lift, which is crucial when you're carrying that much weight, mm. right? But it also, it opened up possibilities for the design. That's why they could do that full length double decker layout. It wasn't yeah. just about cramming in more seats. It was about, you know, changing the whole experience of flying. Okay, but that's what I call leg room. They weren't just trying to pack people in like sardines. No, not at all. The A380, it was designed to be spacious, luxurious, wider seats, higher ceilings. Some airlines even put in lounges, bars. Wait, like a flying hotel. Exactly. It really did change what people expected when they got on a plane. Did it put pressure on other airlines to, you know, up bar, their game? Absolutely. After the A380, suddenly the bar was raised. You started seeing premium economy classes pop up everywhere, better in-flight entertainment, you know, things like that. So the A380 wasn't just a plane. It was a trendsetter. But designing and building something this groundbreaking, I mean, that couldn't have been easy. What were some of the engineering hurdles they had to overcome? Well, the size itself, right. Think about it. It was a massive undertaking. They needed new materials, new construction techniques. That's actually how they ended up using so much carbon fiber composite. Oh, yeah. Was that unusual back then? In aviation, on this scale, absolutely. And it was essential because those materials, they're super strong, but also lightweight. And that's key when you're trying to make a plane this big, even remotely fuel efficient. Speaking of fuel efficiency, I mean, that had to be a concern with a plane this size, right? Of course. Fuel efficiency is always a factor in aviation. And this is important. It became even more critical in the years after the A380 launched. You know, the industry started shifting. Oh, right. Toward those smaller, more fuel efficient aircraft. Yeah. And everyone wanting to fly direct instead of going through big hubs. Yeah, exactly. And that shift, that really played a role in the A380 story too, unfortunately. Right. So we've got this this engineering marvel, yeah. right? Luxurious, huge, meant to rule the skies. But then the market shifts and suddenly those strengths, they're not so advantageous anymore. And on top of that, it's not like you could just park an A380 anywhere. Didn't they have to like rebuild airports to fit this thing? Oh, absolutely. Airports, they had to make some serious changes to accommodate the A380. We're talking longer runways, reinforcing the tarmac just to handle the weight, and then the gates themselves, the jet bridges, those had to be specially designed. Some airports even like had to reroute their taxiways just so this thing could make a turn. I bet. It's like, I don't know, trying to parallel park an RV in a parking spot meant for a smart car. Yeah. Did all those logistical headaches, did they factor into the decision to discontinue the A380? Oh, I'm sure they played a role. I mean, think about it, those infrastructure costs. Not every airport could handle the A380, so it limited where they could fly it. Airlines, they need flexibility, they need efficiency. And the A380, well, it wasn't exactly known for being nimble. Right, right. It makes you wonder, what if the A380 had come along at a different time? before everyone wanted to fly direct, maybe? 
But even though it's being retired, it feels like it made a real impact, you know? Yeah, it pushed the envelope. No question. And its legacy, it goes beyond just its size or even that whole luxury aspect. Like from a purely engineering perspective, it really pushed the use of those composite materials, the carbon fiber, in aircraft manufacturing. And then there's the passenger experience. Right, because it set a new standard. People got used to those bigger seats, the better entertainment systems. Exactly. And other airlines, they had to try to keep up. It's like, even if the A380 itself wasn't the perfect fit for where the market was going, it still pushed the industry forward. It's kind of poetic. When you think about it, it's like a rising tide lifts all boats. Even in its absence, the A380's influence is still felt. That's pretty amazing. It really is. And I think it's a good lesson, you know, that innovation. It's not always about instant success or predicting the future perfectly. Sometimes it's about being audacious, about challenging what we think is possible, even if the ultimate outcome, well, even if it's not what we initially planned. That's a really good point. It's not always about the destination. Right. Sometimes it's about the journey, what we learn along the way. It's kind of sad, in a way, you know, mm -hmm. to think we won't see that giant in the sky anymore. It's like the A380. <laughs> it captured people's imaginations. It did. And for a lot of people, it wasn't just about the plane itself, right? It was about what it represented. That sense of, I don't know, adventure, the sheer scale of it. You mentioned earlier that there's a real sense of nostalgia surrounding his retirement. Like it's more than just a plane being taken out of service. Definitely. You see it all over online forums, people sharing their memories of flying on the A380, first dates on the upper deck, family vacations. Someone even proposed to their partner on an A380 flight. It's wild. Wow. That's a pretty good story to tell the grandkids. You know, for those of us who never actually got to experience it, what's the one thing you think we should remember about the A380? If you had to pick just one. That's a tough one. Hmm. I think I'd say, remember that it was a testament to what's possible when you push boundaries. To build something that ambitious, that outside the box, it took a different way of thinking. It's like, sometimes the most groundbreaking innovations, they come from saying, what if? And actually trying to find out, even if it seems impossible at first. Yes. And the A380, it really embodied that. It wasn't just about building a bigger plane. It was about reimagining what air travel could be. And isn't that what's so fascinating about this whole deep dive? It's not just about the nuts and bolts of aviation. Yeah. Right. It's about human ingenuity. It's about our desire to push limits, to dream big. And to adapt, I'd add. Even when those dreams don't play out exactly as planned, the A380, it might be on its way out, but it changed the industry. It made its mark. It definitely gave us something to aspire to. And who knows? Maybe its legacy will inspire the next generation of aviation marvels. I wouldn't be surprised. Well, on that note, I think we've just about reached the end of our runway for today's deep dive. But it's definitely given us all a lot to think about. To everyone listening, thanks for joining us as we explored this incredible feat of engineering and the impact it had on aviation. Until next time, keep looking up. <laughs>